permit fee. This next item is uh, also a request of information that uh, we received from the Commission. The state has prepared uh, documentation in this particular section, and I'll ask her to do a comment. Um, the first sheet is an added glance. You all will get some more detailed information about the budget process as um, we continue to explore um, focus on, focusing on a revenue neutral environment. Um, so I want to give you a snapshot of where we were as far as the different departments that do have fees and licensing permit charges. What those are, if it's something that has a commission to be effect or if it's something like for my office, um, the only fees and charges that I have are related to the Open Records Act. Set by state statute, so that's not something you can change. Um, but everything else is. So you see the last update column on the cover sheet, you'll see when those fees were last updated. Some of them were as recent as 2012, 2013. Some of them has not been considered as far back as 1994. Um, with the cost of everything increasing, there may be um, some things to consider there um, related to the there also may be some things that perhaps the cost has gone down. We've well, certainly gone to the target more than we need to for those things. So behind that, um, we've broken down by department the documentation that everyone had. It's in a little different format because some of this is currently um, only printed in, the or in an ordinance and is so old that we don't have it electronically. Um, some of it is right off of our website. Um, but if any of you have any questions about what's currently being charged in and why I can certainly um, either answer those questions or make a note to get you some more information on that. And as I said, we'll look at um, some additional information during the budget. One that I would like to point out that's come to light very recently is our adoption fees for animal welfare. Right now it's $85 to adopt a cat, it's $105 to adopt a dog. Periodically, we get requests from citizens as well as the shelter staff in that can we not decrease this because you know, people say, well, I have $50 to adopt a dog, but I don't have $100 to adopt a dog. Um, that $105 right now is putting us about $5 in the hole on dog adoptions and about $3 in the hole on cat adoptions. Um, whenever someone adopts a pet, they go through, they're fully vetted, they get all of their vaccinations, immunizations, they're spayed or neutered. Um, they're microchipped. The value of that is something that would cost several hundred dollars if you had to take your pet to the vet on your own. And I'm sure some of you have experienced that. I certainly have. So it's still a great value that our vets are giving us a great deal there, but of course their costs go up. We've been recently notified that we're looking at another five to seven dollar increase, which is going to put us more like eight to twelve dollars in the hole. So that's something that's being presented to you during the budget process. We certainly don't want to decrease about that deter people from adopting, but again, we've got to do these costs. I have a question about adoption fee. <clears throat> if you went to a pet store and purchased a cat or a dog, how would their prices compare to what the adoption fees are? Pet stores, unless they're sponsored um, somewhat by a rescue, are typically not something that are going to put you through the vetting process um, and or spay and neuter your pet. I really appreciate you, you asking me that because it gives me an opportunity to tell you a little more. Um, we do have a problem with overpopulation here in Lowndes County, which is why our euthanasia numbers are as high as they are. Part of that is the pet store aspect or the Craigslist or the classified breeder aspect of that. We have some very responsible dog and cat breeders here in Lowndes County that are registered correctly with the Department of Agriculture. We have a lot of other people who are nearly running a puppy mill. By law, um, you can only breed a female dog one time during a 12 month process. Any addition to that, you're supposed to be registered with the Department of Agriculture. So what we have related to vet health as well as the overpopulation issue um, is the parking lot puppy syndrome. You're out with your family on a Saturday, you pull through one of our big box stores, someone has a pickup truck with a pen full of puppies, you run into the ATM and you spend four or $500 right then on an impulse buy, not taking into consideration whether that animal is a good fit for your family. You get it home now you're faced with potty training and all of those things. But before that, the parvo hits. Um, many of these dogs have not been vaccinated at all. They have parvo. Our vet community is telling them that you buy that dog on Saturday, on Sunday, 
people are calling their own call, it can cost as much as fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars to get rid of parvo in a puppy, and that's if the puppy can survive the treatment and it can have long-term effects. So, one hundred and five dollars to adopt an animal from the shelter, or you can spend four or five hundred dollars at a pet store or in a parking lot, and then still be faced with you know thousands of dollars in care if you're not careful. So, shelter pets are definitely the best deal, even if um, you all have to go fifty dollars. Thanks. Can we borrow that box? Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll, I'll pass it around. I'll have more boxes built. Um, I'll, I'll put that information in whatever format you want. And I think that anyone who um, hangs out down at the shelter, whether you're a volunteer, and we do have some great volunteers, um, or as you all have faced in just touring the shelter and dealing with the policy issues that, that you have to look at, the reality of that shelter is euthanization. And anything that we can do to educate, to make the public aware of how that impacts our community, um, I think we should take the opportunity to get it out there. I agree. It is very important. One of the things, the concerns I had was, are we losing money on a person adopting an animal? We know all the process here we're going through, get them for adoption. How much are we losing? Should, should it be um, income neutral? You know, should it be something like that? Or should this help? Does make some profit to help defray the cost of running out of shelter. That's kind of where. Right now, we are losing a few dollars on every adoption, and that's simply because of vet costs. And again, um, it's not our local vets trying to take up or take advantage of the shelter. Many of them um, have treated shelter animals that have come in that um, have been hurt or come in sick, and we never receive a bill from those vets. They're doing that as a service to the community. And it's much appreciated. The reason I asked for this for the, for the retreat was a, a couple of reasons. Um, first, um, for some of the things we're talking about regarding um, the uh, animal shelter, you know, I, I don't want us to do anything that puts us in a position to lose money. If it costs what it costs, then, then I want us to adjust those fees so that, so that we aren't sort of wasting, you know, tax revenue on those. And I think the public has a certain expectation that we would um, pass along fees rather than try to try to make money on some of these fees. The second reason I wanted to look at this is because when it comes to trying to do business in Lowndes County or grow Lowndes County, um, what I don't want is I don't want our permitting and fees and things like that to be prohibitive to that. So I. It's difficult to take this list and look at it without a more comprehensive list, um, including areas similar to ours um, around us. And I think we can certainly take a look at it and among ourselves say, yeah, I think this is too high, this is too low, but I don't think we are necessarily qualified to take a comprehensive look and just arbitrarily say this is too high, this is too low. So I think that the only way we can really do this is to see how we fare. Um, number one, make sure that we're not doing what you're saying, we're going to lose $5 here, $8 there. We, we don't want that. And second of all, we want to look at the, the various fees that we charge for different things um, and make sure that we are, we are in line with what other communities similar to ours are charging. That makes sense. There's yeah. two things that we can help you with through the budget process that we can get a snapshot for you on because you're absolutely right. Um, there's sort of two lines of thinking there. What is the going rate for that charge so. in general? The other is how are other communities similar to, to Lowndes County handling those charges and, and what are those fees? I think somewhere in the middle could be what you're looking for. Um, but you're right in that comprehensively, it's not something that you can just look at quickly. Um, for instance, building inspections and all the permits that are related to that. Um, you'll see a proposal here where Lambs County Fire Rescue is proposing a fee schedule. It's nearly unheard of for a fire department the size of Lambs Counties that does as many inspections that are required by state law for them to do every year, but they're not to be a permit and inspection fee of charge to that. So what the fire department has already done is a study of departments and communities our size, and that's how they propose those fees. So right now we're not charging anything. So we're, we're losing money on that employee time in that area. Um, but you 
you have to dig a little deeper because we have a joint inspections department with the right. city of Valdosta. So, you know, those fees I think should be no more than the offset the cost of that department. Um, but other counties like us may have an internal that's offset as a part of engineering, how it works for, for example, that could mean that their fees could be lower um, because it's not taking as much time and it's not as simple on our department. So we'll try to take all that into consideration. And I, honestly, as, as big as this is, I, I don't think it's something that we probably would be able to effectively address before the next budget. I, I really don't, because it's not doing right um, necessarily. But I, I think that I would like to, to take a look at that, particularly in regards to construction fees and, and business occupational tax fees things like that to make sure we are we are in line. Not only the fees themselves, but how responsive are those departments. You know, how quick is the turnaround on those? Um, I'll tell you a really good story. Um, I moved my business um, to a, another municipality and um, applied for an occupational tax. And um, it's been weeks since I've heard anything on that. And I'm just waiting to see, this is my own personal experiment. I just want to see how long it takes um, for me to get all of that, that pushed through. And I don't want to find us in a position that, that that's happening in the county. If it is, I want us to, to fix it. For, um, for the county as it relates to occupational um, tax, if you have a business inside the city limits of one of the cities and you have a paid occupational tax with them, it's as simple as showing the county a copy of that and then we issue you a county one. So I do think that that's a great service that you all are doing and that you're not hitting these businesses again for a separate county tax. Um, so that, I mean, I think that's kind of in line with, with what you're talking about. And also, each one of these would most likely require an update to a current ordinance. So it's going to be a process. It's not that you know, the entire community is going to get hit with a new fee schedule related to everything all at one time. It's something that we would have to draft that ordinance. You all would have to consider that. It would have to be well, I, I would I would agree with you know, pretty much all the comments that have been made simply. Um, I'm, I'm looking at some of them and you know, some of our fees again hasn't we haven't been updated since 1994. So it, you know we know what's happened since 1994 and the fees need to be looked at. So this is something that we probably need to move forward with. Um, look at these fee structures and see if um, uh, you know what needs to be done. Uh, I feel like that these fees need to be primarily uh, revenue neutral. I do believe that. Uh, I also believe though at the same time, there are some areas uh, such as areas that would affect economic development that you need to be real, real careful about that you don't make the process cumbersome to right. move through. Um, so that's gonna be very, very important as we move through this process. But the process is not necessarily uh, or the deterrent through that process is not necessarily the fees you have to pay. Uh, the deterrent is the time. Uh, time is money, and that's the, that's what most people look at. That's what I hear the you know the, the concerns about. So I think if we move through this process, it will give us an opportunity uh, again to look at some of the processes, and those processes would be as important as anything to make sure that we are uh, that we're not creating a situation. Uh, we're, we're doing the things that we need to do, but we're not creating a situation that, that is a deterrent. Um, I will say, I will, let, me, let me add this. You know, everybody has their own opinion. And I've used this analogy with local contractors, but that's the business that I'm in, and with our local inspection department. Familiarity is the best thing that, you, that you've got. I do, a, we have a lot of contacts with our local inspection departments, with our local permitting office. The processes that we go through are relatively smooth. But you take another individual that makes contact once a year with them, it's, it's quite a cumbersome process for them. What they would like to just walk up there and say, here's my, my check, give me my permit. Well, that's not how it works. So whatever the process that they have to go through, all of a sudden it's real cumbersome to them. Um, so again, we can do a little bit better job if that's necessary to do a little bit more education about, about the processes and look at those and make sure that we're getting them as smooth as we possibly can. That's really the key. Uh, 
question on the alcohol fees. How, how are each of these determined? Whenever we... Um, I thought you had to put that big shawl in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right after we updated the ordinance, um, with the Sunday sales and all, we looked at the fee schedule for um, other, other governments in our side of as well as the city of Dallas. So is it on a percentage of sales or is it just more like a thousand seventy five dollars for retail dealer all premises consumption to still spirit. How do you determine that amount? It's, it's, it's a flat amount. The only difference is it would be prorated for There's some, of the, the, some of the processes you have to go through because there's a difference whether they're selling um, on premise or not, right. um, whether they're selling liquor or not. There's differences in the process you go through as far as that approval. Why would on premise be any different than off premise? Why would we charge a higher rate for somebody who sold uh, alcohol off premise? And I know. I would think that if you're selling it on premises, there's also a certain amount of of, of uh, pressure that's put on your resources because you do have that environment created on site, like a big concert. Well, like a big concert, like a like a, <coughs> a, a nightclub, and you, all of a sudden, then your law enforcement's going to be a little bit more taxed because it's there. To where if you, if you go in and pick it up and take it off premises. Maybe just taking it home. And they've got to pay for that law enforcement too. Yeah, there, there's an issue there, so I think that that's where some of those Even issues. with the fire department with an on premise, because occupancy can be such sure. an issue with some establishments, um, the, the fire marshal ends up spending a lot of time as well as police. Yeah, luckily, um, I think all of our establishments that are currently in business are very respectful of the law and the process and, and do really well, but there have been. I know you, you know, experience with other counties working there. How do we, do you have any knowledge of how we weigh in compared to other counties? Are we higher or lower, about the same? Uh, it varies. Most of them were about the same. Some of them were a little bit lower. Um, you know, just like uh, we had uh, some sales. Uh, some of the communities started in the next week before that. So it really depends on the areas that probably make for a comparable community and then overall just add under my, my concern in the big picture, you know, when you talk about fees and all this, it's just it's a tax or it's another way government can collect money and, and it does need to be revenue neutral as possible. I realize that something like this is different. But when you look at how much does it cost to spay and neuter a cat or a dog, and give them shots, and have veterinary physical and all that, we can, those are actual figures we can look at at what costs animal shelter and then try to offset that with adoption fees. I understand that. When you start getting into something like this, you know, you could have one business over here selling 10 times, one bar selling 10 times more alcohol than another bar, but they're all they pay the same. Be. You know, that's that's and they, the, are. And, and they are, and in the same business, you know, but it, it hits a small business owner a lot harder than it does, you know, a, a large business owner. I understand what you're asking, Commissioner Page, I think you make a good point. Um, it sounds like the point you're trying to make is um, if there is a fee attached to a license, if there's no unlike spaying or neutering or something like that if there is no activity related to that where you can justify the cost right. how do we determine the fee is it just arbitrary well i think we've reached a point where that question can be answered by looking at other communities that's the only way i think you can effectively look at it because at some point 
Lowndes County and other counties in Georgia decided to charge a fee for these, and they all came up with them based on probably as many criteria as you can imagine. But we are where we are with those fees, and so I think the moving forward, I think the, the goal should be to make sure that that if there is a cost associated with a fee, that to the best of our ability, we make that fee revenue neutral related to the activities that produce that fee. Spay and neutering is a good example. If there's no activity related to it that you can directly compare the cost, then we compare ourselves to other communities. And, and I, I really agree with the chairman. It's almost the cost of the fees are important, but I think the service we provide and the turnaround is probably more important. So this is clearly a long-term goal, Mr. Chairman. Don't you agree? This is something that's going to take a long time. Yeah. But just as, as Ms. Dibbs said, you know, it, it's not going to be a quick fix. That there's processes that need to be looked at, and as you move through and these issues come up, then we begin to kind of develop it and improve on it. So, yeah, it will be a long-term process. Uh, but, I, but I do agree. I think it is something that we need to move forward with, and we need to look at the fees along with the processes to make sure that uh, and of course, we move forward. I just really want to say that because we have collected the department with the city of Boston that we need to work closely with them and make things more smoother for those that are utilizing that service. Apparently, we have adopted the same, our, our animal control ordinances mirror each other. So, you know, that's a joint department that's housed on your side. Animal control is, um, they handle animal control for unincorporated as well as the Incorporated areas, so they go to two courts. Permits. I wouldn't classify as joint department. Trying to be argumentative, but that's what we do, and we do it in the city limits as well as in the unincorporated area because the city adopted the state to say the ordinance for us to enforce, but certainly in operation and funded. But if, if you were preparing service delivery, that would be something we deliver. Correct. <laughs> ordinance was we mirror theirs um, and have got the same fee structure as well as with inspections and in some other areas. Now, in regards to the, the delivery licenses and so forth, uh, do we do we issue temporary liquor licenses or something like that for special events? I know it's like a new wine concert or a special event for the process. Uh, what is that fee? I didn't see it on the Well, you have to have an alcohol license and an alcohol catering license from whatever jurisdiction you're in, and then you bring that as a $50 permit fee. Oh, I just, I don't beat a dead horse, but I'd like, you know, for staff to find out just how do we compare with other counties. I hope we are lower. You know, I want to be as low business as we can be. On the other things that we've already discussed, you know, like the rehash about we know what a cost is. So if we charge something equal to the cost, it's relatively neutral, but on something like alcohol fees, it might be more uh, hopefully not arbitrary, but just a set fee for everybody paid. I, I would I'd be interested in knowing how we compare. And if they, do they do they the other counties are looking for what the size of the business, the volume? It's like on a business license, you know, Bruce and I have a broad, well-paid business license, but we have to turn in our tax return. They base it upon our receipts. <clears throat> so, because if we do something like that with alcohol. When we upgrade our ordinance, we need to do a comparison with the business. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, we did. And um, in the past, we have looked at um, the size of the business um, and based it off of their structure fees. They do have a business license and an alcohol license, but that's, that's part of them being in the business that they're in. I think that if you try to do anything based on size of business, uh, in, in, let's just, if we're talking about alcohol and, and bars and those sort of things, 
uh, you're going to run into a very, very difficult situation of trying to police that, if you might use that word, because, um, you know, when you start pouring your product into a glass and serving it and somebody's <laughs> handing you a piece of cash, you know, it, it's very difficult to do the tracking and determine actually what's going on. I'm just, you know, that's, that's part of the issue. Um, I think that the fact, the fact that, it, that it's done on a, on a fee basis, um, regardless of the size of it, as a business person, you should know that that's going to be part of your overhead and that's part of what you calculate in before you ever open the door. So I don't think that that, uh, I think doing it on a set fee is a, probably the best way to do it. Let me ask you, if you're asking us to uh, do this comparison on you, uh, who do you want us to compare to? Are you just talking about our surrounding counties? Are you talking about comparable size counties that may be located? I would say the comparable size counties. And, and you know, I don't expect all 159 counties in the state of Georgia. I, it doesn't no, have anything that it'll be. It's just, you know, comparable counties and then the counties bordering us. <clears throat> I would go a little further than that, uh, Mr. Pritchard, and I would say that, that I would consider, um, I would stay in South Georgia with my comparisons. I, I just don't think it would be fair for us to try to compare ourselves to um, a more oh, densely oh. populated area or even some of those counties who might share our population size but that are connected to a denser population. Like a Hall County probably might, they might have as many people as us but they're connected to Gwinnett, which is a larger area, probably more probably more economic development going on. That's probably a horrible example, but I would keep it in, in South Georgia. I would look at, yeah, um, Houghton Thomas County, Thomas places like that, that, that live in the same area that we live, that people are doing business there. You know, we don't want to go to, um, and again, I just want to be, to do North Georgia. I just want to be clear that I don't think this is something we're doing because I sense that we're doing it incorrectly. This is just one of those checks that you need to do periodically to make sure that what you're doing is, is correct. I have every confidence that we're gonna find that that, um, that the way we do our permitting and fees here is um, like many other things we do. Um, we're probably leading by example in those areas and I, I hope to confirm that. I feel confident in the research that we've done so far that we are significantly lower in and I think if we've done the research recently, yeah, I then, then we don't want to, I mean, we don't need to repaint that fence. Let's just, if we've done it recently, then I'm I'm fine with that. And recently would be, I would say, the next, the last five or seven years. Yeah, I agree. So, I agree too, and I'll withdraw my request if it's been done last four or five years and don't do it. We will get a current yeah. assessment based on instruction. There have been a lot of changes in the last five years, so we'll get something in the last five years. Thank you. All right, okay. Uh, any other discussion? Oh, we've been the lecture today, I think. <laughs> well, then we're just using it as an example. Let's clarify that. Is there any other discussion on licenses and permits and fees? That process? Again, I just want to emphasize, I feel like the, the huge emphasis as we move through that process is the ease that the citizens have when they approach these efforts is it easy to get a liquor license if you meet all the qualifications you bring in your proper paperwork can you come right on up here and get your get your permit those are the things you want to do uh, if, you're, if you're building coming in our community you're building a want to uh, build a new commercial establishment do you know what you got to have are you able to go to the permitting office and get that permit in a reasonable amount of time with a reasonable amount of effort get your permit and then start your process. We don't want the process to deter growth. And I think that's really the, the, the emphasis here. So that we move through that well. I just would say I, I would really like to see uh, as all of us uh, some opportunities used more. I know I look, I look at those fees, uh, but, but I do also realize we're trying to upgrade it currently. Uh, and I, I asked the county manager some time ago about do we actually allow alcohol in it in the Civic Center? We don't. Uh, I don't know how you all feel about it. It's a commitment 
process. Temporary licenses and special events, that process can go there. We want to try to make it open to all types of activities. I'm just being honest with you. I'm just being honest with you. Because you can have it at the Rainwater Center, you know, uh, and the other public facilities, but, you know, Civic Center out there on 84. You, you, may, you, might have a tractor, you might have a tractor show or, or, or a truck show, and, and somebody might want to have a little something for people. Maybe we need to upgrade just for the things that they can get there to park. I know when they do those car shows. We're saying move forward. Get, get the information back on your feed. What y'all want me to do on alcohol at six? You want me to look at anything? You want to change it? I would like, like them to consider a lot of the special events for like they have those car shows out there. I think what we need to do, and, and, and I do know a, a little bit of the history on it, you have to be really, really careful about how you, how you, say, okay, you're going to allow alcohol at the Civic Center and to the type of events that you're going to have. Uh, because some events and some things have the history of having a bigger load again on our resources just from the nature of the event itself. Uh, so we need to be a little bit cautious as we move through that. But again, Ms. Bridget, if you and your staff could bring forward to the commissioners that history, along with some recommendations, um, it certainly be something well, I think that we can consider. In light of our having to adjust for the demand of uh, special events that seem to continue, we have to look at what you just indicated, having something there. So if you, somebody chooses to have alcohol, these are the circumstances that we would recommend. And again, it's like anything else if it gets out of hand, we would want to be prepared to take action to stop it. Those are the special events that become problematic or whether it's to be a requirement that they have law enforcement there on alcohol. Well, let's say, I would have been less size to they also. Let, let's just say also, we probably, as we're moving forward, I think that we have that one, but we have had discussion on our special event ordinance to really kind of take a look at that ordinance and update that ordinance itself. Through that process, I think then that you probably could move towards something like that by within that ordinance, you're building in the security, let's say, that you feel like that you need to have in, in a situation of special event. So that may be the way that we can address that issue. It's well a special event or whether it's businesses, whether it's special events, whether it's something at a uh, community uh, event like the Civic Center. When there are added pressures or expenses placed on your staff, on the sheriff's department, on the EMS fire inspections. If we make that reflective of the cost that is incurred, you're going to hear complaints. Nobody said our job is easy. Okay. The next item, if you want to say that, yes, that's fine. was a uh, 